Rather, the goal has already been achieved. We can carry this philosophy into many areas of life, the article continues. Writing, uh, the battle does not end when you publish a book. It ends when you consider yourself a finished product, when you lose the vigilance needed to consider improving your craft. Or in fitness, the battle does not end when you hit a personal record. It ends when you lose concentration and skip workouts or when you lose perspective and overtrain. Entrepreneurship, the battle is, does not end when you make a big sale. It ends when you get cocky and complacent. The enemy of improvement is neither failure nor success. The enemy of improvement is boredom, fatigue, and lack of concentration. The enemy of improvement is a lack of commitment to the process because the process is everything. Okay, then it goes on to talk about the art of Zen Shin in everyday life. One should approach all activities and situations with the same sincerity, the same intensity, and the same awareness that one has with a bow and arrow in hand. We live in a world obsessed with results. Like Herigl, we have the tendency to put so much emphasis on whether or not the arrow hits the target. If, however, we put that intensity and focus and sincerity into the process, where we place our feet, how we hold the bow, how we breathe during the release of the arrow, then always hitting the bullseye is simply a side effect. Think about putting. You want to be a good putter? Put making the putt on the back burner. Focus on what you can control. Focus on your setup. Focus on your visualization. Uh, the point is not to worry about hitting the target. The point is to fall in love with the boredom of doing the work and embrace each piece of the process. The point is to take that moment of Zanshin, the moment of complete awareness and focus, and carry it with you everywhere in life. People say, you know, you got to be focused out there on the golf course, but it's a specific type of focus and a certain area of focus. It's not the target that matters. It's not the finish line that matters. It is the way we approach the goal that matters. Everything is aiming. So, and, and more technically, when Alan Watts talks about he's trying to release the bowstring without thinking first to release it, Think about that. So I think I'm, I'm not a target shooter, but I'm pretty sure if you're squeezing the trigger on a, on a pistol, the reason you're doing that is that the shot kind of wants to come as a bit of surprise. Because if you're trying to pull the trigger, it's going to be it's not going to be very fluid. It's going to be herky jerky and you're going to miss your mark. So the shot almost comes as like a side effect or a surprise of a good process of slowly pulling the trigger or or letting the bowstring go without thinking first to release it. I'm not actively trying to release the bowstring. I'm trying to draw it back to a point where the conditions are sufficient, where the, the string is just going to fire on its own. So that's what uh, Alan Watts is, is alluding to here. Okay, let's keep going. And this is involved in our learning of almost all techniques that we work and work to achieve that final point of perfection. And it doesn't come, it doesn't come, and then one day it happens. Well, Mr. Alan Watts, Herigold just practice, practice, practice. You know, practice makes perfect. That's why he was able to release the bowstring without thinking first to release it, right? Now, what is the reason for that? Is it simply, and this is really, you know, the way it's usually explained, but this is an oversimplification. It is not that we have practiced it so often that it suddenly becomes perfect. It is much more subtle than that. What happens is that we've practiced so often that we find out we can't do it. And it happens at the moment you know you can't do it. When you reach a certain point of despair, when you know that you are the one weird child who will never be able to swim. At that moment, you're swimming. All of a sudden, instead of trying to swim, you're just swimming. Or instead of trying to hit a good shot, and you've hit a million bad shots that day, and you've kind of just given up, and you just swing, and then you hit the one shot that keeps you coming back. Because the desperation and the total inability to do it at all has brought you to a point which we might call don't care. You stop trying, you stop not trying, trying to get it that way, 
you just have arrived at the insight that your decision, your will, doesn't have any part in the thing at all. And that's what you needed to know. You've overcome, you see, the illusion of having a separate ego. So here he's going back to what we read in the article about the archer, that the guy was trying to stress upon his student that the only thing that matters is becoming fascinated with the art of setting up properly. And that's the only thing that you can focus on. As soon as you become outcome oriented, then you've lost the plot. And um, you can't effectively do anything consistently if you're doing it to gain something. The trick is just to swim, not try to swim. Uh, the trick is just to swing, not try to swing a certain way. And there is, of course, practice that goes into creating a good natural swing, just like the archery student had to go through years of fundamentals before he was allowed to hit a longer target. But uh, that's basically what he's talking about here, that there's this feeling in all of us, sort of like this observer that we feel like is separate from the rest of our body, almost kind of like sitting behind our eyeballs, like dictating what we're going to try to do. And the way that you quiet down that voice is to become totally engrossed in whatever task you're doing. In the case of golf, the task at hand is to move a ball to a target. And as long as you're thinking about that, your head's in the right space. But as soon as you think about score or any outside thing, time to reset and start over. There is no way of telling anyone that that's an illusion and getting appropriate action because we are thoroughly indoctrinated with the idea that it's real. And if I say, well, I'm going to get rid of my ego, that's what the Taoists call beating a drum in search of a fugitive. He hears you coming. <laughs> Beating a drum in search of a fugitive reminds me of a recent conversation I had with Sean on the Grown Man Radio podcast. He was, we were talking about putting, and um, I, I talked about how when I'm putting my best, it's almost an out-of-body experience. And he asked me, well, am I trying to have an out-of-body experience? Am I trying to pretend like Sean Canan, you know, the dad, the father, the funeral home director is not here right now? And And I said, well... No, you're all, again, all you can do is, is be totally engrossed in what you're trying to do, in this case, rolling a ball into a hole. So that becomes your entire focus. And uh, anything that's on the side, if you're trying to make the putt to save yourself money or you're trying to make your, the putt to get a birdie, that's going to prohibit you from getting to the right headspace, which feels like an out-of-body experience. So you can't try to have an out-of-body experience. It just happens as a result of uh, be, being fully engrossed in whatever you're doing. So uh, uh, the, the, the ego, that is to say, the illusion of having a separate will and a separate eye center that can be an effective agent, that cannot be overcome by a decision which seems to be centered in the ego you might as well put out fire with fire. If you have the yips around the green and you say, well, I'm just not going to yip it this time, you're not searching in the right spot. The way to get rid of the yips is to look at your technique, and if the technique is okay, then look at your mindset. Are you fully engrossed in hitting the shot to a target, or are you worrying about the fundamentals too much? It can come only when an attempt to act from the ego center has been revealed to be completely futile. Then the thing happens because you've really discovered that it was after all an illusion. Hope you enjoyed that lecture. I know it was pretty inspirational to me in helping understand some of the principles of Stephen Yellen's Fluid Motion Factor program, and it just brought me a lot of peace 
and um, help me find a method that helps me play my best golf. And that's what I love to do. I love to help golfers learn to play golf because it's a very different skill than playing swing, which most of you do on the golf course. You're trying to swing better to shoot lower scores. And I'm trying to hope to, I'm trying to hope to, I'm hoping to encourage you to try to play better, to score better. Cause I think you can play a lot better with your existing swing than you think you can. Um, as long as you remember the circus bear and, uh, just swing, don't try to swing. That's how you have a fight with a mind reading circus bear. If you're not broadcasting, which punch you're going to throw, you're just fighting. He's not going to know if you decide to hit the right hook or the left uppercut. Just swing the golf club. Don't try to swing the golf club. 